All right, in the last uh, section, we were given power series, and then we were asked to find the radius or interval of convergence. Um, and we know that a power series is essentially a function. It's like an infinite degree polynomial um, whose domain is the set of all values that make the series converge. What we're going to focus on in this section is how we represent certain functions by power series. How do we find the power series ourselves that we um, that will represent a given function? So we're going to start by just thinking about this function right here, right? So f of x is one over one minus x, and you know that looks awful close to what um, a geometric series converges to. You know, if you think about here's you know what we know what a geometric series converges to, um, if it does converge a over 1 minus r, and if a is 1 and r is x, then of course you get 1 over 1 minus x. And you can use that to then say, okay, I'm just going to make a geometric series where a is 1 and r is equal to x, and that gives you this series right here. It's a geometric series, so we don't have to perform a ratio test. It's a geometric series. We know that we get convergence when the absolute value of r is less than 1, so in this case, that means that the absolute value of x is less than 1, strictly less than 1, and that's the open interval from minus 1 to 1. So we would say that this function is equal to this series on this interval. It's only, it's only true on that interval, um, but they are equal. We would also say that the power series represents that function on that integral, on that interval, rather. Um, you know, of course, it, it, you know, it's worth observing that the function that we started with, 1 over 1 minus x, now that's defined for all values of x that are as, except for 1. Um, if we wanted to represent that function on a different interval, you know, outside the interval from minus 1 to 1 or include more values, we'd have to center it at a different spot, right? So when we, when we said, oh, this is like the geometric series where a is 1 and r is x, right, right here, that means that we were going to have powers of x that's centered at 0. So let's say we want to center this somewhere else. Let's say we want to center it at c equals negative 1. So if we're going to center it at c equals negative 1, first of all, that means that we're going to have powers of x plus 1, um, or a multiple of x plus 1. So let's start here. We're going to do some algebra. This is where we're going to do some creative algebra to rewrite it in a helpful way. We're going, we're going to, as we often do in this class, we're going to unsimplify this function in what we hope is a helpful way. So we're starting with 1 over 1 minus x. Notice that this is equal to, I could rewrite the bottom as 2 minus parentheses x plus 1. Right, that's 2 minus x minus 1. So then, you know, combining like terms would give us 1 minus x. So these are equal. Um, I'm making progress because now I see I've got the x plus 1 here, and that's what I want uh, for r. Um, but note, you know, with our goal, a geometric series converges to a over 1 minus r. The 1 here is actually pretty important. So to fix that, what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by a half. So now I'm, I've got this fraction written as 1 half over 1 minus x plus 1 over 2. And, you know, it certainly doesn't look like a, it's a simplified version. You know, if we were working on this uh, with this expression in a pre-calculus course, we'd say, oh my gosh, that's so unsimplified. And yeah, sure, it's unsimplified, but it's helpful for our purposes right now. This is in the form a over 1 minus r. Okay, so um, in this case, a is equal to a half. 
and r is x plus 1 over 2. Remember, we wanted powers of x plus 1 or a multiple. So our multiple is just 1 half of x plus 1. We know that we get convergence when the absolute value of r, which is absolute value x plus 1 over 2, is less than 1. And that happens when the absolute value of x plus 1 is less than 2. So um, you could kind of visualize this on the number line, right? The x plus 1 uh, absolute value has to be um, less than 2. So x plus 1 is less than 2. You could set up your, your three-sided inequality that x plus 1 has to be between negative 2 and 2. And so then if we simply subtract 1 from all three sides, we get negative 3 less than x less than 1. So there's our interval of convergence. Um, alternatively, I'm just going to uh, take a moment before we write out the series and say, um, kind of focus on this part, right? So we've isolated, once we isolated like this constant out of it, and we said, oh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so I have this absolute value, and it's just a 1x, plus or minus some value. Right from there, we could tell that the radius is equal to 2. Um, uh, and that just comes from the interpretation that if, I, if a and b are real numbers, that the absolute value of a minus b is equal to the distance from uh, the distance between a and b on the real number line. Right, so if, if uh, absolute value of x plus 1 is less than 2, that means that the Distance between x and negative 1 um, has to be less than 2, so there's your radius of 2. Um, so uh, just kind of putting all this together, we would say that the series, now I'm going to form the series, a r to the n. So that would be a is a half, so 1 half r to the n, x plus 1 over 2 to the n, n equals 0 to infinity, represents... the function uh, 1 over 1 minus x on the interval from minus 3 to 1. All right, let's try another one. We're going to find a geometric power series for the function 4 over x minus, uh, sorry, 4 over x plus 2, centered at 0. So, you know, they, they have to tell us where it's, where they want us to center it. They have to give us a function, tell us where they want it centered. Since it's centered at 0, that means we're going to have powers of x or multiple. And now I know what I need to do is sort of unsimplify this fraction in hopefully a helpful way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I think I'll just reverse the order of addition there, 2 plus x. I want a over 1 minus r. So I want it centered at 0. You know, I just want multiples of x. So I kind of like that x just, just hanging out there at the in the denominator. Um, what I'm going to do now is, since I want it to be at the form a over 1 minus r, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by a half. So you got 2 over 1 plus x over 2. And now, of course, I want it to be a subtraction, so I'm just going to write that as 1 minus a negative x over 2. So there, that's the limit of a geometric series centered at 0, where a is equal to 2, 
and r is negative x over 2. So now the absolute value of r, which is absolute negative x over 2, that has to be less than 1. That means that absolute x has to be less than 2. So we get a radius of 2. And the interval of convergence is minus 2 to 2. So we would say that the series from n equals 0 to infinity of, uh, let's see, a is equal to 2. So 2 r to the uh, a r to the n is 2 negative x over 2 to the n. So that series represents this function. on the interval, open interval, minus 2 to 2. Um, instead of represents, you know, it's not uh, uncommon to just write, you know, equals. Like, that's pretty common. They are equal on that open interval for minus 2 to 2. All right, let's do another one. We're going to find a geometric power series. Uh, for the function 1 over x, centered at 1. All right, centered at 1, that means we want powers of x minus 1, or a multiple, so that's r. So we just need to come up with a way to rewrite this. Um, and you know, instead of x, what I really want is x minus 1. Um, of course, um, if I do that, what I'm actually doing is changing the value of the denominator. What I've done is um, uh, is subtracted 1 from it. So I'm going to undo that. So now I've got 1 over 1 plus x minus 1. These are, in fact, equal, right? Um, but what I need is for it to be a over 1 minus r, not 1 plus r. So I'm just going to change that to minus a negative. Now this fits that form. And um, we've got a is equal to 1 r is equal to negative x minus 1. So absolute r, which is absolute negative x minus 1, has to be less than 1. That means that absolute x minus 1 has to be less than 1. So we get a radius of convergence equal to 1. That gives us an interval of convergence Uh, let's see if it's centered at 1 and the radius is 1, that goes from 0 to 2. And I think that's about all we need here. So we've got our series. Uh, a r to the n, that's 1 times r, which is negative x minus 1 to the n. So this is equal to 1 over x on the interval from 0 to 2. All right. So, um, you know, if we're, if we're starting with a single fraction, um, or we can write it in that form, a over 1 minus r. We're in pretty good shape. Sometimes we might need to do a little bit more work um, and uh, invoke theorem 30. This tells us how to write uh, a series if I, if I can find a series for like a similar or related function. Um, so uh, the first two are pretty simple um, 
applications of, of rules of exponents, you know, that says if I have a series, let's say I have a series for f of x as given here, I can get a series for f of kx, and all you do is just replace x with k times x and use rules of exponents. So you can see how you'll get k to the n, x to the n, instead of just x to the n. Similarly here, if I have a series for f of x, so again, the same series here, and I want a series for x to the big N, meaning maybe uh, like a series for f of x squared or f of x to the fifth or f of x to the one half, like so big N is some fixed number, um, you just replace x with x to the big N and apply rules of exponents, and that directly gets you the series that they've listed here. Um, the third uh, item here just says that we can add like terms. You know, you can you can add one series to another as long as you're combining like terms, like common powers of x together. Um, so if I have a series for f of x and a series for g of x, as long as I'm adding, you know, the 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 same terms together, like the same powers of x, I just combine their respective um, whoops their respective coefficients here. And the fourth one basically just says, you know, we can't really just multiply out series. We can write a product of series, like one series times another series. And that is equal to the product of those two functions. Um, but there's usually not an easy way to, like, multiply it out and write it as a single series. Think about, like, infinite, you know, foiling something out, distributing something out with infinitely many terms. Um, that could be... a uh, easier said than done. So we're going to use this, um, we're going to use uh, theorem 30, or at least part of it, to help us with this problem. So we want a power series centered at zero for this function. Now this is not like the other fractions. With the other fractions I already had at least a constant up top so I could identify A or I could, you know, start on the algebra to kind of rewrite it in a way that made it easier to identify a and r. But I got x's in the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do here, um, I'm just going to notice first, we could factor the, the denominator. So this is x uh, minus 1, x plus 1. Um, and since we can write it this way, um, what we could do is find a partial fraction decomposition. And our game plan is to find a partial fraction decomposition um, and then be able to write a power series for each of those partial fractions that we can then add together using um, item 3 up here. That's going to be our goal. Okay, so we're starting with 3x minus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 1. So a some constant a over x minus 1 plus some constant b over x plus 1. If you multiply through by the LCD, you get 3x minus 1 is equal to a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 1. If x is equal to 1, you get the equation 2 equals 2a, and so a is equal to 1. If you use the value x equals negative 1, you get the equation negative 4 equals negative 2b, and so b is equal to 2. So now I'm going to bring this up here. Uh, we know the values of a and b. So this is 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 over x plus 1. So we're going to find a power series for each of these. 
for each. Centered at zero, right? It's got to be centered where we want our overall series to be centered. And then add them. So just like part C, or item 3 of theorem 30 tells us we can. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with, I guess, maybe the s second fraction, 2 over x plus 1. I want it to be centered at uh, at zero. I don't think there's a whole lot of work we need to do. I'm just going to write this, instead of x plus 1, I'm going to write this as x minus negative x. So a is 2, r is negative x. So this is the series 2 times negative x to the n. And I'm going to rewrite this a little bit just to facilitate adding the two series together. I really want to tease out the x to the n. So I'm going to write this as 2 times negative 1 to the n times x to the n. So we know that we get convergence when absolute x is less than 1. So we get an interval of convergence from minus 1 to 1. Now we'll do the other fraction here, 1 over x minus 1. Again, we want that centered at uh, 0. So the first thing we do is just reverse the order of subtraction there by pulling out a negative. And then I'm going to throw that negative up top. So I got negative 1 over 1 minus x. And that means that a is negative 1 and r is equal to x. So we can put together that geometric series. Uh, and, and if we want, we can even just pull out the negative 1, because there's no ends in this, in this constant factor, right? Um, so I'm going to just pull that out front. So this is minus the series x to the n and equals 0 to infinity. And again, this is just like, or at least the same radius of convergence as the other one. So we have a radius of convergence equal to 1. We get an interval of convergence from minus 1 to 1. Um, we're going to now, you know, we have, so we have a series for each, right? We're going to combine them. Um, and so let's start that process, and we're going to talk about the interval of convergence after. So our given function, which is 3x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. This is the fraction 2 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. So now I'm going to take the series for this guy first, which is right there. And then we're going to add the series for the other fraction. So that really means that we're subtracting the series x to the n. So a couple things we want to just observe. Both of these series start at n equals 0. That's good. Uh, it makes our work easier. Um, and they're already set up, so they have the powers of x kind of teased out. So what we're going to do is form a single series and say, okay, what am I multiplying by x to the n, right? So I've, I've kind of am grabbing that part out, like kind of factoring out that common factor. 
and now I want to combine like terms. So in the first in the first series, I've got 2 times negative 1 to the n minus, and then this coefficient on x to the n is just 1, so minus 1. So there's our series for 3x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Now we just need to figure out the interval of convergence. Now for our two fractions, we had the same interval of convergence. That interval will be inherited by this series. It's kind of nice and simple. In general, if your intervals of convergence for your two fractions, uh, two or more fractions, if they're different, you only get convergence where they all converge. So it's where the intervals overlap. Here, they happen to overlap perfectly because they're the same interval. So our interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1. All right, in this, um, in this next example, we want to find a power series for the function f of x equals ln of x centered at 1, centered at c equals 1. Um, and so, of course, that means we want uh, powers of x minus 1. What's odd about this one so far is, like, you know, our function is ln x. It's not a fraction that we can use algebra to rewrite to get in that form a over 1 minus r. Um, however, it is related to a fraction, a function that, that we can write in that form to get a geometric series for. So if we look back in example 51, we got a geometric power series for 1 over x centered at 1, centered at the same spot. So let's just sort of start there. So from... Example 551, we know that 1 over x is equal to the series negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n, um, with an interval of convergence equal to the open interval from 0 to 2. And of course, ln x is related to that function, right? The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So just turning that around, um, we know that uh, the integral of 1 over x is uh, ln x, you know, plus some constant. So just rearranging that equation, ln x is some constant plus um, the integral of 1 over x. So let's use that. So ln x is some constant plus the integral of this series And we can just integrate this term by term um, using the power rule. We bring down that factor of negative 1 to the n, that's a constant factor, and then use the power rule on x minus 1 to the n. So we get uh, negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So what we'd like to do is find c, so we know if there actually is a, a, a constant that we need. Um, and uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just write out the first few terms of this series. So if n is 0, we get just the term x minus 1. And then if n is 1, we get minus x minus 1 squared over 2, and then if n is 2, we get plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 minus, and so on, right? So there's all these terms. So in order to see what, uh, what c is, we're going to consider the function at the center. So let's let x equal 1. On the one hand, I know that ln of 1 is equal to 0, and 
this series is zero. Right? Because all those terms end up being zero when we plug in this when we plug in the center. And that's enough for us to conclude that this constant here must also equal zero. So now we've got our series. That means that ln of x must equal the series minus 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now the same radius, it's, got to, it's going to inherit the same radius. We saw that um, at the, uh, from that theorem at the end of the last section. So it inherits the same radius. r is equal to 1. We just need to test the endpoints. And those end, you know, this is centered at 1. So those endpoints are going to be 0 and 2. So if x is equal to 0, the series we get is negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now this product here, negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1, um, that is always going to be negative 1. Uh, because you always have like negative 1 squared times negative 1 cubed or negative 1 to the fifth times negative 1 to the sixth. Because they're consecutive powers, 1's going to be 1 and 1 will be negative 1. And when you multiply them, you get negative 1. And so this is the series negative 1 over n plus 1. And this diverges. Um, it diverges, you could say, by, um, well, you could pull out the, the negative, put that out in front, and then use um, the integral test and show that that series uh, diverges. That's one way to do it. You could also, after you pull out the, the negative sign, uh, use a comparison to the series 1 over n. Uh, that would work too. <coughs> so that series diverges. Let's test the other endpoint. If x is equal to 2, our series is negative 1 to the n times 1 to the n. Uh, sorry, 1 to the n plus 1, which is just 1 over n plus 1. So negative 1 to the n over n plus 1. Kind of drop my indices off. Uh, the series before. Um, so what does this series do? It's alternating, right? We have this factor of negative 1 to the n appearing in these terms. So the terms are decreasing. The terms do approach 0. Um, and that means that this converges by the alternating series test. So that means um, we've got our interval of convergence um, will be the half open interval, open at 0 and closed at 2. And I'm just going to kind of put this all together. Ln x is equal to this series. on this interval. All right, we're going to do one more. This time we're going to get a power series for the function arctan x centered at 0. So that means we're going to want powers of x Again, this is another function that is not just a fraction that we can use algebra to rewrite in a in the form a over 1 minus r. So we have to think about how it's related to another function that 
we could maybe write in that form. Um, and this is going to be kind of a two-step process here. So uh, first we'll just note that the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now already it's looking better because it is algebraic and it is this fraction, but of course it's not, you know, we have 1 over 1 plus x squared, not 1 over 1 plus x. That would be better. Um, but if we're thinking, you know what, it would be better to work with 1 over 1 plus x, then let's do it, right? Let's, we're, we're just going to work with that function that we want to work with and then use uh, that theorem, I think it was theorem 30, um, to use that series to obtain a series for f prime. So let's sort of spell this out first. We're going to work with, I'll call this function g of x. So that's 1 over 1 plus x. I can make a series for that, right? I can use algebra to rewrite it in a nice form. It's actually only a little bit of algebra you need to do. I can get a series for that. Um, and then f prime of x, right, this function up here, this is equal to g of x squared, and we can use theorem 30. to get a series. For f prime of x. So that's sort of phase one of this process. Um, because if I can have if I can get a series for f prime of x, then I can use the technique we did in the last problem and just integrate to get a series for the function that we're after. So um, let's begin 1 over 1 plus x that's g of x. This is 1 over 1 minus negative x. And so a is equal to 1, r is equal to negative x. So this geometric series for this function is uh, negative x to the n. And I'm going to tease out the, the factor of negative 1 there. So it'll actually be a negative 1 to the n. All right. Now, uh, just because it's a geometric series, um, you know, we're going to get convergence when absolute value of x is less than 1. So we get an interval of convergence on the open interval from minus 1 to 1. So there's, um, there's the series for g of x. So now let's get a series for g of x squared. g of x squared is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And I'm just going to replace x with x squared. going to simplify this a little bit. Of course, uh, this is n equals 0 to infinity. n equals 0 to infinity. Negative 1 to the n. And then that would be x to the 2n using our rules of exponents. So this right here is a series for 1 over 1 plus x squared. That is progress. Okay? So and that is, that's the derivative of the function that we want. So now we can get the function we want, arctan of x is some constant c plus the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. So a constant plus the integral of this series. And now we're just going to integrate this using the power rule. Um, 
we have a factor of negative 1 to the n. That constant factor comes right down with us. And then using the power rule on x to the 2n gives us x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So, so far this is what we got. We've got our series just about we would like to figure out what is that um, constant c. And so I'm going to start just by writing out the first few terms of this series. So um, when n is 0, negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1, so our, our, our term starts out positive. Um, and we have x to the first over 1. So our first term is x, and then we have a minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7, and so on, right? Um, and I'm doing this, I write out the first few terms because I want to make sure that I can plug in, you know, in order to figure out what c is, I want to be able to plug in the center, and I know just about all the terms are going to zero out, in this case, exactly all the terms zero out. So, um, if we plug in x equals 0, first of all, we know that arctan of 0 is 0. And the series is 0. And so that is enough for us to conclude that c has to be equal to 0. And so that means that our uh, series for arctan oops, and let's see, we have negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So there is this series.